Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm gonna to work on setting up a drip system to my window boxes on the house. Erin is actually gonna come out and help me with this here in a little bit because I think at one point we're gonna to have to run the drip tubing underneath the part of our house, like through the crawl space. Um, so let me kind of show you what we're thinking. First of all, we've got the supplies here. I ordered 300 feet of this WaterWise, it says right there, WaterWise drip tubing from Proven Winners. Um, I love it because it's white and it's really pliable and soft. It's much easier to work with than a lot of the other drip tubing that you can buy so it doesn't hurt your fingers. But it also matches our house, so I don't have to paint it, which is great. Um, the other thing, so here's more of the drip tubing right here, more right there. I have got a backflow prevention valve right here, um, which will go, this hooks right into a hose. And then I've got an adapter. This is a quarter, three quarter inch to quarter inch adapter. So this just screws onto the backflow preventer and then uh, your tubing just connects to that. You can connect the whole thing to a timer that's connected to your hose if you want. There is a possibility we can actually hook this whole thing into one of our drip zones because I think we have one available um, that's not being used for anything else. So we'll kind of address that when we get to that point of the project, which will probably be right at the very end. And I've also got a bunch of connectors. So we've got quarter inch elbow, oops, elbows. There are, uh, uh, straight couplers, crosses, and this should be T's. Yep, T's. So there's only one window box that's been planted, which is this one right here on the kitchen window. Daffodils are doing great. Everything's like filled in big time. I'm probably not gonna run actual emitters to this because it's so thick. I'll probably wait until I swap it out with summer plants. So we'll start with the drip tubing here and just kind of leave it loose so that I can, you know, kind of fix that once I get to it. But we're gonna have to figure out a way to get all the way up like to the ceiling and over and then drop down to each individual window box. So like I said, you know, these are grasses from last season. Um, that I still need to clean out. Let me swing around the front here. Then we've got these two as well. So we'll have to kind of make a corner here, come down to these window baskets. And then while we're at it, I might try to get these containers on drip as well, since we'll be so close. And then the other side of the house, we have three more window baskets. So these two, and then the one, this is on a bathroom window right there. And so we thought it's actually a great opportunity if we just continue like following the line down and then we'll drop down right here um, by where that block cord is, come down this way and then we'll go through the crawl space. So underneath the sun porch and come out on the other side. We'll come out on the other side, which is exactly what they did to bring our AC unit over here. Uh, and then we can run the tube all the way over to our irrigation boxes here. And there should be an available zone in one of those. So it's gonna be a pretty intricate network of tubing, I think. So that's why Aaron's gonna come out and help me because we both wanna know like where the access points are to all the tubing. Like if there's a problem, we both know how to fix it and where the tubing is running. Um, so anyway, the only thing that I forgot to get supply-wise uh, were emitters. So I'm gonna run out to the barn and grab those and then we'll get started. So here they are, there's half gallon, one gallon per hour, and two gallon uh, per hour emitters. I'm just gonna bring them all because I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna need. So the benefit of having them all set up on drip is that it makes them super low maintenance. And I just wanted to address the fact that when I put these in, I did tell you that they were self-watering, and they are. Um, they do have a little reservoir in the bottom, but it's really little, and it might buy you maybe a day. Um, in the heat of summer, I still found myself needing to water these about once a day. So I don't know, I feel like once I get it set up on drip, it'll be a lot easier. There's Aaron. Um, and that way we can like take off for the day or whatever. And also we don't have a hose that's really easy to drag to any of these window baskets. We have one that's near like the front ones, um, but this one I have to take the whole hose out and drag it all the way around here. It's just a huge pain. And the water isn't, I, I don't know about the grading of the concrete around the house, but it puddles and some of it runs toward the house a little bit. Um, so I like to eliminate the amount of water that's sitting down on the bottom. So it'll be really easy to adjust the drip system so that we don't have any of that mess and then I don't have to deal with the hose. You know what, we're gonna probably need a ladder of some kind too, so I'm gonna go grab that. So the last thing I forgot to show you that we're gonna use are these cable clips and the tubing can run through, you can see that opening there, and then we can easily screw them to the house. We find these are really easy to place, like you can get them exactly where you want them. 
They'll need to be painted. They will need to be painted, but that's okay. It's better than having all black tubing. So do you want to run this one right in this groove or in this groove? Well, it might make more sense because it, will it tuck underneath here? Yeah, it'll it just might. have a little bit of a, every time you have to bend it. Right, so if we did this one here, It'll just hide behind here and hide come behind. Up. So right. I think this is probably a better. Would okay, just entertain this. I don't know if this would work, but you want to come down? Would that that would look dumb, wouldn't it? No, not, I think going across will. Would be much more efficient. That's for sure. Yeah. If we came down, then it would have to go over the top of the siding get a bunch. Up on the molding. Right. Because you'd have to go around. The right, you're right. Going around the molding will make it stand out. Okay, well let's not entertain that thought then. Okay, so this is where we're starting, which is the furthermost container from our source of water. And I'm just going to leave this one empty like I told you before because of all the plants and I'll work on getting all my emitters after I do my plant change out for summer. But we just run it right behind the box and then Aaron is using one of the clips to clip it right into the house there. So let me, do you mind holding that up? Like a little bit straighter to the house so they can see, yeah. What are you talking about? Well, I just wanted to see. So like, honestly, you guys, once these clips are painted white, I mean, you, you can see it if you know it's there, but I honestly don't know if somebody would really like, I don't know, would you look at that and be like, oh, they've got tubing on their house. Yeah. Would you? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> is it better though than um, having to water them all the time? I don't know. Let's uh, let's just do this little section. And okay. All right. Okay, we gotta leave. We gotta, oh, we gotta leave them now because now there's holes in the house. Yeah, so it can just bend right up behind that window box. You okay. Cut this? So do you have a cutter? Uh, yeah. I think I do right in the house, but I just wanted to back up. Like, let's paint them. Let's just grab some white paint really quick and see what it looks like if we kind of uh, like touch up the black. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, I'll be right back. Our house is dirty. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, we'll let that dry and then I'll put one more little quick coat on there. I actually think that that makes it hide pretty easy. And then right here, you can see where it said Proven Winners Water Wise and just that little light teal color. This tubing is completely paintable. So you can paint over that if you need to, or if you want to. I'm actually really happy with how this is looking so far. So there's the first length of drip tube and it pops up into this window box here. Aaron left a little bit of extra. And then he's actually working on just running it between all the boxes for me right now while I set up each individual box. So there's another length of it here. So to connect it, I'm gonna be using T's. I'm gonna put five emitters in each, in this, um, window box in particular because it is a six foot box. Let me back up. So it's pretty wide so I want to have an emitter in the middle and then a couple on each side of it. So this is how it will run. The tubing will run to this right here on this side on the right side and then the other one will connect on that side and then I'm just going to be doing little pieces of tubing in between each one then a little piece of tubing on the end of each one with the emitter that I'll stake down into the window box. I hope that makes sense. I'll show you guys what it looks like in the end. I think I'm gonna get rid of these grasses though real quick because they're kind of in the way. All right, the first box is done. So this is where the tubing comes in and then I did a T and then I come off with a little piece of tubing. There are stakes that you can get that fit right around the tubing, which I think are necessary because they allow you to kind of direct the water exactly where you want it to go. And then I put a two gallon per hour emitter on the end of the tubing, which you can do ones or 0.5s or whatever, even four gallon per hour. You just have to adjust how long you run it. So there's my second one and I kind of space these out like a dork. I didn't really do it exact, but that's okay. I left some of the tubing right here a little bit long so I could curve it around and kind of position it exactly where I want. But that's essentially what it looks like before the plants go in. So the tubing on the left side goes back down uh, against the wall. I need to paint these clips. And then we're just gonna repeat that same process in these baskets, but in this one, I'll probably only do three or four emitters. This is a three foot basket, I think. Yeah, Aaron has already made it really far. My word, so he's made it around the house. This is where it'll probably be the most visible. Of course, I'll paint these. Um, do you think Aaron, it w well, it wouldn't have been worth it to tuck it in right here, right? Like to, I think it might be to go down right here and then go around here and then bring it right back up here and then elbow so we don't have that around the house. I think you won't notice it once it's painted. 
I think it's noticeable now because it's black. Are you sure? Well, we should, we can, it's already cut now. Yeah. So let's just paint it and see what you think. Okay. And if you want to change it, we'll change it. Okay. Also, these daffodils stink really bad. They smell like bad breath. They do. <laughs> this is what, early cheer? Early, I don't know how to say the variety. Yeah, early, early, with early, eye, early cheer with Early eye. cheer with it. Yeah. And they're gorgeous. I planted them last fall, but oh, they are stinky. They are filling the air with their pungent aroma right now. Wow. Second box looks a lot better. I did my spacing a little bit more right on. So there's one in the center, two on the sides. Uh, I don't have enough stakes to finish this job, so I'm gonna have to get online and order some more of those um, that fit this tubing. Uh, but I think that this will work perfect. I do need to clean out my pine cone soil top dress to get ready for some plants. I think somebody needs to invent a tool though that um, puts those emitters in the tubing really easy, like in one shot because your fingers do get pretty tired um, after a little while. First side of the house is all done. So all the window boxes have drip and all of the little clips have been painted. And it probably would be easier to spray paint these prior to installing them. I'm um, just lining them all up and spray painting them, but I'm never that organized. So this is not taking that long either. I might have to do a little touch up paint on the sides of them, but so far so good. I did paint the one that goes around the corner and I still don't think I love it. Let me back up. I mean, <laughs> you can see it, especially, you know, if you're looking for it. Um, maybe if somebody came, they might be distracted by more pretty things, hopefully. Um, but I might still do an elbow, run it right alongside that molding and then under it and then back up so you don't see that little piece curving around the corner. But I don't know if it really matters that much. What matters is all the time we are saving by setting all of these containers up on drip. So I'm gonna do this box, but on this side, let me show you how this is working out. So it comes out of this box, comes to the door, there's my reflection, and then it goes down. And so what I'm thinking of doing, I'm gonna put a um, T in there so that I can go this direction and this direction, but I'll tee off and come right behind the pot so I can go underneath it or even over the side of it right now since it currently has things in it um, and that way you don't see any drip tubing coming like you know just I don't know pooling down here or on the surface and then when we run it this way I think what we're gonna do is order a rug and I don't know why I never thought of this Aaron was like we could just put a rug right here it's totally protected from the elements and then we'll just tuck that little tube underneath the rug and you won't see it the other thing you can buy is one of those cord covers which there's one on the floor right inside let me show you so we have a lamp right in the middle of our great room. And so we just had to run one of these cord covers so that we could plug it in so that nobody tripped over it. Um, not like the best looking thing. I suppose you could get a white one or even that brown one. Those kind of things you can get at an office supply store. But I kind of love the idea of getting a rug, like something neat, maybe something monogrammed. I think that would look really pretty up here. So that doesn't look awesome yet. Not until I get something to cover this tube, which once it gets warmer out, this tubing will relax and I'll be able to kind of put it where I want it. We'll put the rug over it. And then when I get ready to replant, I will run this tube up underneath the container through the drain hole. And that's the benefit of remembering to run that tubing when you're planting your container even if you're not ready to set it up on drip that way you don't see this kind of thing because that doesn't look great um, but soon it will look a lot better and this project is going a lot faster than I thought it would go but even if it took longer it's totally worth every bit of time and investment because it'll save so much stress during the heat of the summer Aaron's now putting the uh, tubing on because my fingers are too sore diaper GD <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is real life right there this is where our diaper genie lives right now. <laughs> Garden art. It actually kind of blends in a little bit up here. Not too bad. No, at least it's not like bright blue or pink or something. Like our other sweet dumpster out there, it's bright blue. So these are all done. Have yet to paint those. I'll save that for last. How are your fingers feeling? They kind of hurt actually. <laughs> yeah, it's not an easy thing. I wonder if maybe we got a hairdryer and like, Heat it up because I know I've dealt with these in the sun uh -huh. and they're way more pliable. right. Like or like a, if you do it on some a hot cold water. day, it's much harder than right. Although this stuff is a lot easier than the stuff at Home Depot. Yeah, for sure. All right, all the window boxes and containers are done. 
So now let me show you what's next a little closer. The drip tubing comes out of this last window box and just follows the house underneath this window and to the corner. Let me get over there and show you. So here it is right here. What we need to do is drill a hole, go underneath the porch and sun porch to the other side in the crawl space. And while we're at it, we actually have to run a half inch drip tube as well because this area where the AC unit was it used to be tied into the grass sprinklers, um, but it's not anymore and we need to get it connected to the drip tubing that's on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is tap into the drip tubing with just a half inch black solid tube, run it underneath the porch and then out, and then I'll tap into the drip line over on the other side. Do you wanna show me where you think we'll be able to come out over here? Yeah. Right there in the corner, right where it goes from stone oh, okay. to wood. So it'll be the corner Easy of the- Easy to find underneath. Yeah, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Here is the quarter inch tubing I'm gonna use. This is the other color of Waterwise tubing right here. Um, I don't have a really great place to use tan, so I think this is a really good project to use it in. So Aaron is gonna make a hole in the side of the house real quick. Can you peek around with the- Flashlight? Flashlight and just make sure I'm not gonna drill into anything. I would love to peek around. Where's the uh, flashlight? To the left of the hole, baby. Okay, let me, let me double check here. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Made it. All right, let's see if we can fit both okay. of them in there. All right, so, okay. Do they both okay. fit? They both fit. Oh, yay. So do you wanna go drill a hole on the other side? Yeah. So now I'm gonna crawl under the house. Okay, now tubing, can you, oh, okay, I got it. Okay, you're gonna wanna go a little slow so it doesn't kink. Okay, am I good? Yep. Even more. Did you put it in? Yeah. Nice. Do you feel accomplished? Um. Yeah, I've never been under a house before. It's a first for me. I'm actually impressed by how clean it is down there. Yeah, I it's mean, not bad. I mean, there's cobwebs and stuff, but like, I don't, I didn't look to see if there was any big spiders. I think that would have stopped me maybe. Oh, look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the black tubing first real quick before we attach it on the other side. Closest drip tubing is right here. So here's our drip tubing coming out from underneath the house. So I just need to couple the two of these together just using a straight coupler right here. So everything is all hooked up over on this side. So let's go check it out on the other side. So that's where both of them come out. Half inch is already connected and there's the quarter inch and it just follows the house all the way down to our water system down there where Aaron is. And later on, I'll come out here and I'll bury all this extra tubing that you see so that it doesn't look like a mess right there. All right, Aaron, do you want to explain how we're going to connect it here? Sure. So I've got the tubing, which comes from where you just were. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, I'm going to hook it up to our irrigation system, which is right here. But let me show you. Which, right here in this yeah. box. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. But let me show you how you would do it if you, just a normal home. Okay. Like if you didn't have an irrigation an system. Extra an extra zone, zone available. So most people are going to put it onto a spigot, like on the side of their house. So this is just a regular, what size is this? Like three quarter inch. Three quarter inch. Mm -hmm. So here's what you'll do. Um, if you want to put a timer on, you can put a timer on that would just go on like this, but I'll make it even simpler. So we've got a backflow preventer. Get in on that. What's so this called? A backflow preventer? A backflow preventer, backflow or? preventer va yeah. thing. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little filter in here so that no junk can get back into your water system. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put this on first. And then you should also probably put a pressure regulator. Everybody says to put a, a 20 PSI, I think it is. Is it 25 PSI Maybe or 20? Maybe it's 25. I'll correct it on screen when I'm editing this. But um, we've never done that and it's never been an issue. Mm -mm, so like our whole vegetable garden. Everybody says to do that, but yeah. we never have. So mm -hmm. probably should do that. I don't know. Do um, as we yeah, do say, as we not say. as we do. Uh, and then this just necks it down from three quarter inch mm -hmm. down to quarter inch. So we'll put this on here. You know, I don't have a plug on the very end one. <laughs> That'll be interesting. I'll put this on. On that very, the kitchen window basket is the only one that doesn't have a, any emitters on it. 
Should we grab a plug real quick? No, I think we could just walk over there and we'll be able to see right away if it works. Yeah. Because it'll, it'll take just a second to travel the well, distance. Okay, it's moment, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Please work. I imagine it will take a minute, right? The only possible thing, well, don't point it at me. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that could have gone awry possibly is if somehow it got- Plugged? Uh, not, pl not plugged, but like underneath the house, if it got pulled against that hole too hard and like got cut somehow. Oh yeah. That, That's possible. How possible do you think that is? Well, anything's we possible. To see if there's water? Maybe. Maybe. Did you turn the hose on all the way? Yeah. Well, yeah, let's go investigate, Erin. All right, guys, it is a new day. We had to stop working on the project um, and stop troubleshooting because we had some people show up, and by the time they left, it was too dark. Um, but the last thing you saw was that it wasn't working properly. It was only pushing water about halfway through the system, and then it just stopped. Um, so it stopped on this side of the door. So Aaron actually went out in the dark last night and cut off all of the two gallon per hour emitters that we put on all the ends and replaced them with half gallon an hour emitters and all of a sudden they all worked. So I think, and correct me if I'm wrong Aaron, I think what the problem was is that we ran that quarter inch tubing way too far. I, I think so. I think you're only supposed to go like 100 feet with it and we went over 100 feet with it. And I think maybe two gallon per hour emitters. So if you buy the, the WaterWise kit, it comes with one gallon per hour emitters, and I think that would have worked too. Uh -huh. I think putting two gallon was just, it was twice. It was like too emitters. taxing. It was... Yeah, it was too much for too long of a stretch. Mm -hmm. So it works now. And he made the point, and this makes sense, if you have half gallon per hour emitters, it's a slower drip, so it's gonna saturate the soil a lot better than running a two gallon emitter for a lot less time because that water is just gonna shoot right to the bottom of the pot. And if you're only running it for 10 minutes or whatever, it's probably not gonna fully saturate the soil as opposed to maybe running a half gallon emitter for 30 minutes or whatever we mm -hmm. end up running them. Um, it'll have actually have time to soak through the soil. So it makes a whole lot more sense and it actually works now. But you know what, we didn't actually explain how we are going to be installing it into our irrigation system, so we thought we'd run back over there and explain that a little bit better. All right, so this is how we hooked it up just for now, just to show you what it would look like probably at your house. What we're doing is we're actually gonna tie it into our sprinkler system on its own zone. So what we had is we had somebody, a landscape professional, dig down and tap into this same pipe actually and run a box over here take a look closer at this. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's four valves in here. So there's four, four valves and they're all controlled by this battery operated, it's called a Hunter node. Um, and I can control um, the different zones. And anyway, this is like probably one of the worst timers I've ever used in my life. The system on it is like, the UI is terrible. Whoever invented it. But it's the only thing that's Deserves kind of- a demotion. <laughs> Well, we're using them everywhere. <laughs> Five demerits for that person. <laughs> we're using them. We have how many? Well, okay. They're useful. They're very, very useful. It's I like just... the only thing out there on the market kind of like it, except for I think now they have them to where you can actually control them with your phone, but they're expensive. So anyway, there are four uh, valves here. Two of them are currently being used. So there's a drip zone in here. So you can see we've already tapped in here. There's a drip line. Closer right there. You can see where it's coming out of yeah, it just comes out and goes that yeah, way. Yeah. And so then this has there's, nothing to do with it. There's another one that's like just a little bit buried under the soil right there. Um, so these two are not being used. So what I'm gonna do is tap into one of these and this is just a little cap. Oh. So oh. there's a one inch pipe right Ooh, there. Gotta be ginger with the dirt, huh? So these are the three pieces I'm gonna use to connect to the one inch right there. So I've got um, a one inch to, I believe a three quarter threaded. And then I'll use this piece to go in like this. That's just threaded on both sides. Yeah, threaded on both sides. And then this is the same thing that would go on, like this is essentially a hose bib. Um, so this will just go on like this, and then my quarter inch will fit right on there. So that's how I went from a uh, one inch pipe down to a quarter inch uh, drip tube. Nice. So I'll tighten that. And then what I'm gonna do is just glue this uh, right here, I'll dig that out just a little bit, and then I'll glue this piece onto that. I used to fix pipes in the pasture with my dad. Kind of like the smell of it. Thoughts? <laughs> I don't know if you want to say that on camera. Why? <laughs> nope, we're good. Good. It's year old stuff. 
You should be wearing gloves and a mask, Aaron. Looks good. How long do we need to let it sit there? Oh, probably, you know, I'm not really sure. Okay, there we go. Nice. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes, so we're ready to fire it up and see if it works. Okay, so you've got it on zone four, set to run for 10 minutes. And I'm standing back just in case something blows. <laughs> yeah, but nothing popped on. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it turn on. Oh, you, you hit on? Yeah, I did. Oh, I hear it now. Yeah. Should we go look and see if it's going to the baskets? Yeah. So this is the very last one on the run. So I guess it might take a minute though to make it this distance. Oh, oh, we got water right here. There's a little drip of water. So there's water coming out of this one. This is the second to last basket. There we go. Oh, here it comes. Is it coming? It's working now. Yeah, so it took about a minute for the water to reach the very last dripper, which is pretty good, I think. It does come out kind of slow, but that's all right. We will run it for a longer amount of time and it will saturate the soil much more thoroughly. So that was a successful drip irrigation project. And like I said earlier, it's worth every bit of investment and time you put into setting it up because it frees you up so much through the whole season. Like if you were to add up how long I had to drag hoses around the house every single day through the summer months, like May through usually September, that's a lot of time when you add that up. I mean, I don't even know how much. Time. Yeah, and then take into account all the other containers we have around the property. It actually frees me up to plant more because I don't have to be a slave to watering every last thing that I plant. So our advice is to definitely start working on getting a drip system. And we don't still don't have everything set up on drip. We're working on it every year to make our property less work, uh, more maintenance free, if you can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> we have like the furthest thing from a maintenance free park property, but our containers are pretty self-sufficient. Um, so we will link everything that we used down in the um, comment section or the description down below so you guys can check it out. If you are a total beginner, I would recommend that you get the WaterWise drip system kit from provenwinners.com. We'll link that down below because it comes with everything you need to get started and it makes it really um, like attainable. I don't know if that's the right word, but it makes it doable um, because it's very mapped out and it makes sense and you're not standing in front of a bunch of bins at the box store wondering like what parts what I should I buy, buy? Um, and it'll get you started uh, so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope it was helpful and maybe inspirational to get your containers set up this year we'll see you guys in the next one bye